How radical is your love style? How do you demonstrate love that is beyond human reason? What have you suffered and what have you endured in order to show love for others? Who are the most difficult people in your life for you to love? What is the cost of love? I tend to start messages with questions. But these are some of the questions I felt God asking me as I read through the passage that we're going to look at today in our continuing series through the Gospel of Luke. What's your love style like? I believe God is asking you and I the very same questions. And one day will ultimately require an answer to each of them. My friend, I believe God is asking us to change the way we love. It cannot be like the world's way of love. It has to be God's way. And it is completely different than our natural human way of loving. So if you've got your Bible, turn with me to the Gospel of Luke and chapter 6. We're now at verse 27. This is Jesus teaching to his disciples as he taught them on the plane. Not the airplane, a level plane. Jesus said this, But I say to you who hear, Love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you. To one who strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from one who takes away your cloak, do not withhold your tunic either. Give to everyone who begs from you. And from one who takes away your goods, do not demand them back. And as you wish that others would do to you, do so to them. If you love those who love you, what benefit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what benefit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. And if you lend to those from whom you expect to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to get back the same amount. But love your enemies, and do good and lend, expecting nothing in return, and your reward will be great, and you will be sons of the Most High, for He is kind to the ungrateful and the evil. Be merciful, even as your Father is merciful. Amen. God, as we look into your word today, may you just speak to our hearts, reveal to us what it is you want to teach us today, what you want to teach me today. God, open our ears to hear you, our hearts to know you, our minds to understand, and then move us to action for your glory and for your kingdom. Amen. The golden rule. We just heard that in here. To do unto others as you would have them do unto you. It's echoed in in Jesus' teaching for those who are his disciples, his followers, Christians. That's who he's speaking to. It seems almost too simple, though. Treat others the way you want to be treated. Sure, that, that sounds good. We've probably taught this to our children. You treat your little friends the way you want your little friends to treat you. Even not yet Christians can instruct their children and each other in in what is a very good way to treat other people, the way you would expect to be treated yourself. But there's a, a piece missing from that. A piece missing from that rule when removed from the context of the entire teaching can actually leave that just a little bit empty. Too easy to ignore, forget, or or even just dismiss. 
See, the rule itself is good. It's very good. But we need the whole thing to understand what Jesus is really saying. Context is always so vital. You see, my nature is to think that if I treat others well, they will also do the same for me. If I say nice things, they will speak well of me, or maybe even to me. If, if I share my time, my abilities, my things, maybe even my money, that, that all of that will, will come back to me in the form of, of others appreciating, maybe even loving me, because I'm treating them the way I would want to be treated. That is my inner hope. That's my thought. But is it my reality? Is it yours? Doing good for others can be pretty easy when they are easygoing people. But what if they're not so easy to love? Not so agreeable to my willingness to, to do for them? What if these others are my enemies? What then? Well, Jesus makes it rather clear. I'm to love them. Love them, my enemies. He doesn't just say, love them in your heart and be done at that. No, Jesus says, do good to those who hate you. That literally means that to those people who hate you, I am to do something good for them. Not for me, for them. Not for my good, theirs. I can't just say it. I love you, enemy. Done. I can't just believe it or, or put a bumper sticker or paste that good thought on social media. No, we're to do something. This requires action, application. Do you know how much that goes against our natural way of thinking and acting? Look at two toddlers. Put them in a playpen and watch them for a while and see what happens when they have an argument, when they become each other's enemies over a toy or anything else. Watch kindergartners in the classroom, teenagers in the schoolyard. Watch shoppers at the Costco parking lot or politicians on the campaign trail. One slings mud and they go at each other like all of them are toddlers in a playpen. So I have to ask myself, well, who is it who hates me? Who are my enemies? And what's the good that I will do for them? And in case you think that no one hates you, think again, Christian. There are people in all of our lives who would love nothing more than for us to never mention Jesus being the only way, the truth, and the life in their presence. They don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear his name. They don't want to hear nothing about the Bible. They just want to leave that alone. Just stop right there. We have enemies. Christians have enemies. Jesus has enemies. And Jesus doesn't just stop there with saying to love your enemies. He says to bless those who curse you. To pray for those who abuse you. To the one who strikes you on the cheek, offer the other one also. And from one who takes away your cloak, do not withhold your tunic either. Give to everyone who begs from you. And for one who takes away your goods, do not demand them back. It's a bit more than just do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. In some ways, this can sound ridiculous. Someone speaks bad things about me and, and I'm to bless them? Someone hurts my heart real deep, abuses me, uses me, and I'm to pray for that person? Someone smacks me in the face and I'm, I'm to offer them the other cheek to smack? Hey, go ahead. I'm supposed to just take it? 
Someone takes my coat and I'm to say, oh, well, here's my shirt too while you're at it. Have it all. Every beggar gets something from me. Give to everyone who begs. The thief, caught red-handed taking my stuff, gets to walk away. And I'm not to worry about it ever again. Yep. Yes. Absolutely. You bet. You heard correctly. Affirmative. That's the truth. This is the way. Okay, I borrowed that last one. This is the way that Christians are to love, to demonstrate love, to show love, to live out love. All these seemingly counter self reactions are to be the way of the disciple of Jesus. Every natural instinct I may have to lash out at my enemies and my oppressors is to be cast out. And we are to react in the total opposite of what our natural self would want to do. I'm to react in blessing, in prayer, in generosity, with an overabundance of giving, and of course, in love. Why? Why would Jesus ask me to do something so totally against what I might seem entitled to and most assuredly could do? I, I know what I could do in my natural self. He says, no, that's not the way. Why love when what I want to do is retaliate? Here's the reason. Because love is exactly how God has acted towards us. To us who have been his enemies. We who have hated him. Who have shaken our fist at him. He loves us. He does good for us. He gives and he gives and he gives when we beg of him. He gives to those of us who've stolen away the life that he gave us and, and lived it for ourselves. He loves us. We who have begged God even to forgive us for the things we, we know we've done wrong at times, receive that forgiveness and then go right back to doing the same things that broke his heart in the first place. Over and over and over, God keeps loving. Over and over and over, God demonstrates the way we are to act, the way we are to live, the way we are to love. Verse 35 describes it so clearly. This is God. He says, love your enemies. That's God loving us. Do good and lend. Is that not God? Doing good and wonderful and amazing things for us on a constant basis and lending us, basically giving us time, lending us life, lending us the ability to honor our, Him with our lives. That's God. And expect nothing in return. God loves us even though he knows that some of us will reject him. God loves all of humanity so much, knowing that not everyone's going to return that love to him. He still loves. Look at the word in verse 35. He is kind to whom? Those who love him. He's kind to the church. He's kind to Christians. He's kind to those who give and, and give tithes and offerings. He's, he's good to those who are good to others. No, he is kind to the ungrateful and he is kind to the evil. God is kind to them. He's kind to you and he's kind to me. My self, my self would want to, to love others and, and expect others to love me in return. That's, that's my natural way of, of living life. I expect something back. God loves, even though not everyone 
loves him. He's merciful. He does not give us what we deserve. He doesn't give us what in in his right and, and his clear ability to do, he doesn't do that. He doesn't smite us out and and lay waste to us. No, he loves us. And he gives us chance after chance, day after day. He gives us our entire life to figure out what it means to be loved so much and then to share that love with others. We know that what we really deserve is God's wrath. And yet in his mercy, he's kind and he's loving. God gives life to all. He gives every person on earth an opportunity to respond to the love he has demonstrated to everyone. And no matter how a person responds, he still loves. And God is asking us, he's asking me, he's asking you, he's asking the church to do the very same. Love like this. Here's my example. Do the same. And the promise for loving like this is that we become sons and daughters of the Most High. Eternity with the Lord in heaven, the heaven he's preparing for those who do love him and who do love others, especially those who don't necessarily love us in return. That's who God is asking us to love. Loving your enemy is demonstrating a godly love. It's not trying to stand out yourself and and look better than anyone else. It's No, it's, it's just to demonstrate the way God has loved you. Following the example that God has laid out for us through Jesus Christ. Just, just loving those who do love us. Well, anyone can do that. That's easy. The way to show true love is to love those who don't necessarily love us. And that might just give them cause to ask why. God did it like this. God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that whoever believes in him should not perish but should have everlasting life. Is there any other better demonstration of God's amazing, merciful love? This is God showing us mercy. Instead of punishing all of humanity for the sin we've all committed, He loves. So all of us, you, myself, We are also called to be merciful, as our Father in heaven is merciful. So the question comes down to this. How are you going to do that? What are you going to do about it? Knowing now that, that Jesus said, you need to be merciful, you need to love your enemies, you need to do good and be good and lend and give and all of these things. You've heard this now. To all you who hear, I say, Jesus says, What are you going to do? How will you show and do and give and pray for those people in your lives that don't love Jesus, who don't love you, who reject your faith, who've rejected God? How are you going to love them? What specific things is God asking you to do now that will demonstrate the mercy of God that he has shown you to them. Today, right after you hear this message, I'm going to ask you to do something. Get some paper and a pen. And then I'm going to ask you to pray and ask God to show you the people in your life, specific people that are your enemies. People who are enemies of God. Those who may have stolen from you, hurt you, used you, abused you, borrowed from you, cursed you, or hated you. 
write down their names and start by praying for each one of them specifically. It might be one person, it might be a whole bunch. Whatever and whomever God lays on your heart, write it down. Ask God how you can love them, not just in words, but in deeds. What can I do to demonstrate your love, God, to them? Keep those names close. Perhaps in your Bible or at your bedside and pray for them constantly. Keep asking God for opportunities to show them the kind of love God has revealed to you. Don't let this just slip by, my friend. Do this. Jesus didn't just suggest this. He said, do this. Be merciful. He said, love your enemies. Let's pray. God, thank you for your word. Thank you that you gave us such clear instruction as to how we are to love. We are to love like you do. Like you did so long ago when you gave your son. Like you did when you gave us life. Like you did when you created everything. Like you're doing right now in giving us an opportunity to love you and to love our neighbor, to love our enemy, to show real love. God, I pray and, and we pray that by your Holy Spirit you would speak into our hearts right now and reveal to us where in our lives there are things we need to deal with so that we can love you more and we can start loving others more, especially those who are hard to love. We all have hurts in our lives. We all have people in our lives who have hurt us. Forgive us, Father, for not loving them. Forgive us for pushing them aside and maybe turning them away. God, turn our hearts towards them. Help us to demonstrate your love to them. Give us specific things and, and give us those opportunities to demonstrate that love. Maybe it's picking up the phone and talking to someone that we haven't spoken a word to in years. Maybe it's writing a letter to someone whom we've written off. Maybe it's just going down the hall and speaking to a parent, a child, a spouse, and demonstrating your love by sharing the gospel, by just being real with the people maybe under our very own roof. Maybe it's a coworker, a friend, or another relative. God, help us to demonstrate your love to go and do these things that you've commanded us to do in your word. You gave so much in showing your love for us by giving your son, Jesus, so that we could all have life everlasting. The least we can do is to share that love with others. So God, help us to do that today and every day. Show us the, the people we need to pray for people we need to talk with, the people we need to spend time with in order to give them every opportunity to know you and to have you be their Lord and Savior, to become your disciples as well. Thank you for this word, God. May we not be able to, to leave this undone. We want to be your church. We want to be your people. We want to be more like Jesus. So help us to do that for your glory and for your kingdom. In Jesus' mighty, merciful, loving name we pray. And everyone said, 
Amen. God bless you. Have an awesome week. Talk to you soon.